Hello, this is Doug Tidwell for the Redis Lab Sample Code Marketplace here with another great application. Today's special feature is a web analytics app that shows you how to use Redis bit fields, also known as Redis bitmaps, along with other data types. When we start the app, it creates nearly 3,500 keys in Redis so that we have some interesting data to look at. We'll start with the UI, then we'll use Redis Insight to go through the data, and we'll look at the Redis commands we use to manage it. The UI has three dashboards, one for traffic, one for sales, and one for customers and cohorts. This application uses the popular chart.js package to visualize the data. What we're looking at here is a graph of all the traffic to four different pages on our site throughout the month of December. There's also a table that summarizes data for certain pages. At the bottom of the page is a table and pie chart for the source of our web traffic. As you might have noticed, Hovering over a data point gives us more information about it. And finally, if you want, you can view the data for an individual week. Moving on to the sales analytics panel, we can see how many products were put in a shopping cart but later abandoned, as well as the distribution of products that our customers bought. As you would expect, changing the time period updates the graphs. The last panel is the Customer and Cohort Analysis panel. This gives us more insights as to how customers interacted with our site. For the first time, we're looking at registration data. The graph here shows us that we had 20 people register, 90% of whom went on to buy something. That's a really good percentage. The cohort data also lets us see which customers bought a particular product and we can see who bought both product one and product two, as well as a list of all the customers who bought products on more than one day. We mentioned that the code creates roughly 3,500 data points to initialize things, so it shouldn't come as a surprise that an individual event creates and updates many different keys. To illustrate how this works, we'll use the flush Redis button to delete all of this app's data. As you can see, this clears out the display as well. Now we'll say that on December 4th, based on a referral from Facebook, user 17 bought product 3, and we'll click the Create button to store that data. Now we'll go to Redis Insight to look at the data itself. The purchase we just registered created 80 keys. The data is stored in three different structures, sets, strings that we'll use as counters, and strings that we'll use as bit fields. Typically, the code stores a given action five ways, as happening on a particular day, in a particular week, in a particular month, in a particular year, and in a key with the word anytime in its name. That makes it easy for us to see what happened in a number of time frames. So when our user bought product 3 after we wiped out the database, the code created 25 sets. Five sets are specific to product 3, and another five simply track that someone bought something. Each set contains the value 16, which confusingly means user 17. The customer numbers are zero-based, but the usernames are one-based. If another user buys product 3, their customer number will be added to the existing set. The code also created sets related to Facebook. Five for Facebook referrals that led to purchases of product 3, and five for Facebook referrals to anything at all. And finally, there are five global sets that contain the customer numbers for everyone who visited any page on the site. There are a lot of keys here, but they make it easy to find all the users who bought product 3, or all the users referred by Facebook in the first week of December. Every time something happens on our site, a bunch of keys are automatically updated by adding users to sets, 
incrementing counters and setting bits in bit fields. That means we don't have to gather multiple keys and process them somehow to find what we're looking for. There's a single key that holds the answer to any query we might have. The sets tell us information about particular users, but they don't tell us anything about quantities. For example, if we want to know how many times user 17 bought product 3, we can't find that information in the sets. For that, we use counters. The purchase of product 3 also created 30 more keys, six groups of five counters each, to keep track of information in the different time frames. We have counters to keep track of how many times user 17 bought anything, how many times our site got a referral from Facebook that led to a purchase, and so on. Which brings us to Redis bit fields, sometimes called bitmaps. A bit field is simply a string, but we use Redis's bitwise operators to set or get or count individual bits within that string. As with sets and counters, we create five groups of five bit fields each to track activity on our site. Bit fields allow us to store a great deal of data in very little space. As you can see, our data is displayed in hex, to represent our recent purchase, exactly one bit has been set in each bit field. Finally, we'll go to the code to look at the Redis commands that make everything happen. Managing the counters is simple. Set creates the counter, get gets it, and inker increments the counter by one every time something happens. To update a set, we simply use the sAdd, or setAdd operator, to add a user's ID to a set. Redis creates the set if it doesn't exist already. Then we can use smembers to get all the users who belong to a certain set, such as users who bought product 3. The sEnter operator gives us the intersection of two sets, which makes it easy to see who bought both product 1 and product 2. And we don't use it in this app, but the sUnion operator would make it easy to see all the people who bought either product 1 or product 2. For bit fields, set bit sets a particular bit, and bit count gives us the count of all the bits set to 1 in the bit field. Finally, it's worth looking at the code behind the flush Redis button. The code uses the Redis scan command to find all of the keys for this app. We call scan until Redis tells us there are no more keys that match the pattern we're looking for. Once we have all of those keys, we call the Redis delete command to delete each one. It's best practice to use scan instead of the keys command to avoid tying up the server if you have lots of data to go through. So that's today's sample. We've looked at a very sophisticated application that uses specialized techniques for organizing data. We hope this has been useful, and as always, be sure to check the marketplace often for more great samples to help you make the most of Redis.